What's going on y'all and welcome on in. Today was a great day guys. Bellion is officially here. So let's make today's video um, talking all about Bellion. So as per usual in all of our hero debuts, let's do the same thing. I'll have some gameplay footage in the beginning. Let's just talk about my experience, what I've learned, what people have shown me. Um, so we'll talk about different builds. We'll talk about what I think about her like gameplay wise, whether or not I think you should pull for her. I forgot to mention that right above, but as per usual, boys, make sure y'all leave me in the comments section below. Um, if you summon for her, how, first off, how your summons went. I always like to hear about that. And second, if you did decide to pull for her and you got her, let me know what kind of builds you're enjoying. But at the end, I'll talk about my favorite build so far, what I'm going to be trying as well as potential other builds. And then like things such as Mola priority. Okay. Anyways. Let's get on with the video. Thanks for joining me today. All right, guys. First things first, since I asked you guys how your, your summons went, mine on stream, which by the way, you know, you always hear me. I sound like a broken record at this point. Come join us over on Twitch. I'd love to have you there. You can ask me questions more directly. Come hang. A lot of people from YouTube have stopped by and they really enjoy it. So thank you guys if you have stopped by. If you're thinking about it, um, I stream almost every single day. So just, you know, try to find me live. Anyways, my, my summons, surprisingly, boys, went pretty dang well. Um, not to brag or anything because we've you know, we've had our fair share of pities here and there If you guys are having trouble summoning my heart goes out to you I've been there, you know, but hopefully the luck comes around for some of y'all if you're in tough times But we ended up getting her boys within 20 um, Within a thousand mystics 20 pulls so we got super lucky the first 10 summon I got a shiny, but it was just all four stars second 10x pull 10x group of summons I saw the purple spark. I got super excited. I was really worried. It was gonna be like the I know a lot of y'all pulled for Angel of Light Angelica and either got a dupe specimen says or didn't you got a specimen says you didn't want. I thought the game would troll me this time around and give me aux lots since I saw a purple shiny and, and ignore Billion. But luckily we, we just got her early and now I can save for ML Lilius and things like that. By the way, if you guys do end up skipping Billion and I'll give you my thoughts on whether or not you should pull for her depending on what kind of player you are. Check out my other guide, my other video. Maybe I'll put a picture up of the uh, thumbnail on um, what is it? upcoming potential upcoming moonlight or not moonlight yeah moonlight units and mystic summon rotations all right just in case you were curious who's coming after bellion just a quick recap after bellion it's going to be judge kisei rerun because of the arena uh season end we'll get a new hero most likely ml Lilia, since he, since she was previewed in that last hero patch and then after that the next rerun could be anyone from apocalypse ravi sage ball um it's probably not going to be haste guys or tywin because they're in the coin shop so it could be uh remnant violet by which Isaria, they're all kind of in that time frame but if you want more exact details check out that other video anyways without further ado let's go ahead and talk about bellion and i'll put on some gameplay footage in the background uh for you guys to check out because we had a ton of fun running here so let me go ahead and say this before we start talking about if i think you should pull or not mola builds and just gear building things like that let me give my first impressions while some gameplay footage is hopefully showing um i think bellion is the real deal guys so some of y'all might be watching and saying, yeah, Carl, we all knew from the get-go she would be the death of Cleve. She's, she stops Taga Hell's book. She stops so She's going to be powerful. A lot of people actually thought she might be a little underwhelming, believe it or not. And I I think that's just because we weren't sure on... We saw the multipliers. They looked pretty good. People were data, data mining the multipliers. But until you actually see her in-game, um, you're not sure how much she's going to do outside of stopping the souls. When we combine it all, guys, I'm just going to say there's a lot of units that are good, but they don't feel necessarily like great either they're purely like a counter style unit or they require some rng require a lot of you know thought to build around bellion may become like that later on if you fight uh, stronger and stronger players that know her counters and know how to fight against her but right now i'll just say tossing her in even as a first pick in real time arena world arena and just kind of slapping on different builds she always felt like she was doing something the animations looked great and she just feels really strong. She feels like a Moonlight 5-star. So let's get that out of the way. She felt very, very fun to play. And I think anyone that's not cleaving or just doesn't enjoy playing Knights, something like that. There's players out there like that. Um, I think anyone will get great use out of her. And I think you'll enjoy her. Because visually, she's awesome. Skill-wise, she's awesome. And gameplay-wise, too, boys. She's very, very strong. Now, I mentioned I tried different builds. We'll go into that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and first talk whether or not I think you should pull for her. Now, I think every single player... Like I mentioned, if you're not, if you enjoy PvP, let's start with that. If you enjoy PvP, if you, as long as you're not purely a cleaver, like a speed contester, and you still may want to pick her up, I'm not sure if cleavers will be able to adopt her in uh, in their own playstyle, kind of like they did with Angel Light, Angelica, and Politus. I don't think so, because she's not aggressive enough. Maybe there'll be a build that surprises me. I know control players can run her well, so if you play like speed control, 
if you run her behind an Angel of Light Angelica, which is something I did for a little bit, um, that's very powerful. But regardless, I think most players that play standard, or if you don't mind playing, you know, knights and stuff, I think you'll make you'll get a lot of mileage out of her kit. She does so much, and a lot of it flies under the radar. We'll discuss that a little more uh, in detail in just here in just in just a minute. But the people that shouldn't pull, it's really just those of you that don't like PvP and don't like real time arena. Because even if you like. You don't like real-time arena guys i think she's going to be a monster for arena defense guild war defense possibly um and she's also pretty good there on offense as well if your opponent lets you you know depending on what they pick for their defense teams but she'll be she's already creeping up in the top arena defense teams and i expect her to stay there unless the skill to um ever gets changed or anything like that which i don't think it will be Alrighty, guys let's go in and talk about builds so i've tried counter build i tried speed build those are the main two and i've seen lifesteal builds work we were talking about injury set here's the best thing about belly i think guys unless you're shooting for number one legend which case you need a you need a very refined build that you know fights the current meta and then you'll have to constantly evolve and shift it with speed tunes and things like that i think everyone outside of that so emperor champion we're still nothing to scoff at right very high up in the skill rankings i think so far and i know it's only been one day i think she can have so many she, she has so much build diversity because she doesn't really need uh too much of a specific stat or role even uh, she just does AoE that strips, she does good damage, she has debilitating debuffs, she has self-sustain potentially with defense up plus heal here. She provokes, so she'll provide some type of mitigation for her team. And the, you know, the most important thing I think is when you build her on quicker damage and with the multipliers looking nice plus the Molagora damage buffs, um, like the damage dealt bonus, she's something you can't ignore either. And then we didn't even mention it guys, but the most important thing, the decreased amount of souls is so underrated. Just her being on the field, even when you're not fighting a, a cleaver that's stacking Taga Hell's book, right? That's what everyone was afraid of. Even against an opponent that doesn't bring any books, the fact that you can soul burn and your opponent can't means Bellion is always just being effective. So I really encourage people, especially with a unit like this, to try out different builds. I want to see some of y'all run injury. Let me know if you're Katie's Farmers. Any Katie's Farmers on my YouTube? Try that out for me. I think it has a lot of potential. I think Lifesteal can be good too, especially if you don't like to run a lot of Soyvers. Um, speed set will be the most universal. Let's start with that. My build here, guys, I think I would just want to push even more speed and drop some defense in exchange. Probably drop some attack percentage too. That kind of just came naturally throughout the gear. But I would want to run her right, right after my strip units or control units. Or just in general, she'll be fast, which she can land some early provokes. Just be aware she's like dizzy. The skill three has no strips, so a lot of times you'll lead with skill one, but that's okay. Speed build, I think, is overall the most beneficial if you're not sure where to specialize yet. Counter build, I think, is great too. Go for similar stats like this. Just try to maintain also 200 speed. You may have to sacrifice something somewhere, but I've seen 200 speed counter builds already that look like my stat line. They just, their gear is that much higher quality. Like I said, I just slapped it on some random stuff. The lifesteal build, I think we would want to prioritize more damage so we really benefit off of the, uh, the lifesteal back. And then we definitely want to be running Elbris, and we'll get to artifacts here in a second. Overall, though, the only one I think I ha wasn't able to really look into would be a higher effectiveness build, guys, and going more control. Because I did run a lot of Ambitious Tywin and a lot of Angel of Light Angelica along with her, and the, the amount of control you put on your opponent is so debilitating. I think she could be one of the units that really pushes control into a great spot. Especially for players that don't just play like the speedy control, that want to play more of a knight or slower control setup. Be on the lookout for that, guys. I'll be testing that this week. Now, in terms of other artifacts, I think Elbrus is the main one. It, it means you can't really ignore her. Your opponent is always afraid of hitting anyone on the team because they're not sure if you're on counter set. And like I keep mentioning, if you fully mola um, or build crit and crit damage, these things, these light of destructions add up and they look brutal, boys. They just feel like they hit hard. They're hitting four units at once. They're just they're stripping. And then if it's on your turn, the fact that it might also lead into Shackle Suppression, ooh, it does a lot of damage, guys. So Elbrus, I think, will be the safest overall. But if you want to just play something like Adamant or Aureus in a more typical knight setup, like let's say you want to make her your main knight, I think that's fine too. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw some Justice for All builds that just for fun want to stack on to more buffs from the skill too. But right now, I think start with Elbrus. If people start focusing her down, you know, we might want Holy Sacrifice. Um, but overall, I think Elbrus is just really, really strong because her skill one is very, very strong. As for potential units or what kind of drafts we want to bring her in, I kind of mentioned, let's start with control, guys. If you draft her with, like, Ambitious Tywin or Angel of Light Angelica, let's start with Angel of Light Angelica. If you start with Angel or a unit like Cerise, someone with a strip, 
we can lead immediately into Bellion's um, Provoke, which will give us just a lot of momentum, a lot of tempo, because not only are we defense up, but we're provoking the enemy. They're wasting their entire first turn hitting Bellion, who if you're on counter set, this is one of the big benefits of counter set, you get that first turn, uh, a lot of chances to hit those Light of Destructions. Overall, though, it just gives her defense up and stops the opponent from doing what they want. So she also is a backup control on top of that, and then you can lead to, into technically more control with decreased speed and decreased hit chance, right? Still debilitating with some soul burns, or if you just proc it naturally from the skill 1, 35% activation chance. So control obviously works really well. I also think she's going to work really well in just standard comps, guys. So what I mean by that, a lot of y'all will be pulling Landy this week. Here's what you need to do for RTA, guys. Make your Landy a little bit tankier. Make all your Bruiser damage units, so Spectre, Tenebrius, uh, Seaside, Bologna, Carrot, all those AoE kind of, you know, really safe to draft units. Give them a little bit more bulk than normal. Make sure you, if you can, draft a strong Soiver like Amelia or Maid Chloe, even DN, uh, whoever you got, and then a strong Knight. So Bellion could be that Knight, or we could run a typical Knight like Crow, Fallen Cecilia, plus Bellion, and may just make her more damage. But if you run some Soiver, some Knights, and then, of course, just the typical Spectre, Tenebria, Carrot, Landy, I think so many of you guys are going to just have a lot of success running the typical, you know, vanilla draft. She fits in perfectly, I think, without really any specific gearing requirements. Um, she's always doing something, good damage, stripping, giving yourself random buffs, giving yourself defense up and provoking, and then, of course, stopping the souls, which I said is one of the most underrated features beyond stopping Taga Hells, right? You, you won't notice it too often, but when your opponent's not getting souls and you're knocking out soul burns left and right, you're going to win some matches. So I think she fits in any standard draft, and then the main one to look out for is control. I don't know if she works in cleave. I'm not a cleaver, but I know a lot of cleavers like to pick anti-cleave units and adopt them as their own playstyle to stop your opponent from getting it, but I have a feeling she's too slow, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if someone crazy out there is able to build it. All right, so that was artifacts. That was um, gearing. Let's talk molas real fast, and we'll wrap it up here. Molagor situation, guys, you will want plus 15. But in the beginning, if you need to skimp, just skip on the skill too. It's the weakest part of her kit besides the soul part. The random buffs, it's whatever. I know some people are going to try 50% crit chance build for when you proc that uh, random buff and get the crit chance. I think that might be too RNG, like too random. But I could see it having some potential, especially for gearing situations. But overall, just skimp here, guys. Make sure you get the minus one turn cooldown here. And at least get the buff dispel chance on the skill one. You really just want a plus 15 here, though, for all the damage. All right? She's that kind of unit that's just sitting there, always doing something. The more molas you give her, the better she'll perform. She's a great unit that wants as many molas as possible. Also, don't forget to skimp on the imprints, okay, guys? Her memory, memory imprints, gold, 10 gold transmits a pop. Um, very good. You're going to swap between this and this, depending on if your opponent is running any debuffs or you just want more tankiness. All right? That's Bellin in a nutshell, guys. She's absolutely insane if you're a pvp -er, the only time you don't pull is if you play PvE only, all right? She's a wife. She's waifu as heck, too. You got to get her, boys. Let me know how your summons go. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, y'all.